Today on Podcast Them Down, we're talking to Jeff Addison about the Pocono Folk Metal Festival. Podcast Them Down! Welcome to Podcast Them Down. I'm Tim Regan from U.S. power metal band Burning Shadows, Fade to Black Metallica tribute, dual violin folk metal band Eisenmore, and recently vacated Graves True Zombie Metal. Be sure to subscribe, like, or follow. And now, on with the show. All right, so, like I said, <laughs> I got Mike here again, and we are talking to Jeff Addison from Pocono Folk Metal Fest, the organizer and promoter and whatever other titles you want to give, you want to oh, toss on to the top of it? That's more than enough. I don't need any more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so, great uh, to be here. I'm, I'm so happy that we got to uh, we get to do this. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the podcast, so I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to uh, have been uh, invited on. Yeah, thanks for coming. This was like one of the, when we were coming up with uh, ideas for episodes, this was one of the first ones. Oh, oh so. awesome. That's awesome. Well, it's good to see you guys. I mean, I haven't seen you in, well, when was this, the last, it was two years ago, yeah. two and a half years ago. So, I mean, just things I, haven't worked out to get down there. So, but right, uh, I haven't seen Mike. I've seen Mike once in person in the last year and a half for obvious yeah. reasons. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. He's not as pixely as uh, oh, yeah. he, is, I mean, he seems. <laughs> yeah, last time you saw him. Yeah, it's like I've, I've just become so used to the way things are now that I've kind of forgotten about that, too, you know. Yeah. So, you know, just, uh, um, I mean, hopefully things are, are starting to turn around so that, uh, you know, things can kind of get back to normal for everyone. Yep. Yeah, yeah agreed. It's on the way. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... So, so no. why did you start? Let's start at the beginning. The why did you start the Pocono Folk? Uh, th- oh, actually, let me back up one step. The is the official name the Pocono Folk slash Pagan slash Viking Metal Fest. Yeah, often yeah. shortened to po- Pocono yes. Folk Metal Fest. Thank you. Yeah, because there there wasn't enough uh, hyphens available. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, because I I try and you know I don't know if I think over time it just became easier obviously just to call it the Pocono folk metal fest, but I, I wanted to make sure that I did not want to, you know, I don't want it to be too super niche as far as, uh, you know, genre was concerned. So, I mean, cause I always, you know, I wanted to put some other, you know, kind of sub genres in there too, and, and, and kind of make it a little more all inclusive. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, I guess you can consider all of them folk metal on some level, but you know, if I get a band that's like a Viking metal band that might be kind of more black metal-y, you know, I, I didn't want it to be like, you know, ah, I can't really do that because you're not folk metal. So I, you know, it was easier to shorten it, but I wanted to try to make it as descriptive as, you know, super descriptive as possible. So people knew what, what the deal was. So, right. Right. But yeah, Pocono Folk Metal Festival works way, way better for, you know, just, it just rolls off the tongue. You know? Right. <laughs> It's easier to type PMF out. PMF uh, yeah, that, too. Yeah, I, I, you know, too too many. You know, it's not like scuba or NASA. You know, just <laughs> the it's just easy. Yeah, but it's just it, it's just easier, and it um it just kind of got to be. Yeah, I, I, again, from a descriptive point of view, I wanted to throw all those other things in there, but just the folk metal fest works way way easier. So yeah, yeah, definitely. So so why'd you start? start doing the first so there have been three of them right and i believe an attempt at a fourth that was right. foiled yeah well it was you know um the last one was tough i mean physically and mentally financially it was really really tough um i put a lot of work into it um you know, when we went from trying to do just one day, which was, was hard and, and then going into two days. So, I mean, starting, you know, Friday morning before, you know, the first day of the festival, I mean, I was, I think I was up for about 60 hours. I mean, I, I was just, I was exhausted. I mean, I, I was so wired and I just had a thousand things going through my head. And then when it was over, it was like, I was just so amped up that I just, you know, 
I just couldn't, I couldn't calm down. And, um, so, I mean, it was, it, it really, it really took its toll on me. I mean, um, just all that planning and then, you know, um, then I'm, I'm already thinking about the next one. I mean, it was like, as soon as it was over, I was already thinking about it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, it was just becoming all consuming. And, um, so we started, you know, I had the, the, gentleman who um was in charge of all our merchants and stuff for the festival we were already talking we were texting back and forth and it was probably early spring maybe the winter uh or early spring and i had just got to the point where i'm like i can't afford to lose money like i did before and i was i was losing my mind and i was like you know it's not even it's seven months away potentially and, um, I just said, I, I, I got to just take a step back and, and kind of reevaluate and stuff. And I really had to get financially back, you know, on level, level fields because, um, yeah, I mean, I put a lot of my own money into it and, you know, sadly, um, I mean, you know, on paper, if you look at the lineup of the bands that were there, I would have thought this is like kind of a no brainer. I mean, this place should be packed and it just wasn't. And I don't, you know, I still don't know why, you know, things didn't pan out what I, uh, the way I'd expected, but, you know, I would rather try it and fail than, than not to, to do it at all. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the show was great. I mean, um, you know, and, and just looking at it now, a couple of years later, you've got, you know, three bands, they're all signed to labels now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I have a list of all the lineups. <laughs> ah, so. good. I mean, um, well, I, it's it's just um, you know I, I I don't portray myself to be an expert or anything like that. But I I when I saw the bands that I could potentially you know when I was start, starting to talk to them, and it's, these are guys or gals that I've known, so it's not like. Um, you know, I'm just like taking a shot in the dark or whatever. I, I just, you know, the bands and stuff that I could, could potentially get. I mean, everyone, of course, wants bands from Europe and, you know, bands from, you know, uh, Canada to come and it's, or for wherever. And it's, it's not that easy. I don't think people understand the logistics. Yeah. No, uh, just take a few more, take a, uh, take a few more mortgages out. Yeah. Then- oh, sure. <laughs> well, it's funny because like when I first started doing it, um, the, the very first show and I put it out there, I mean, like on Craigslist of all places, I think I just put it out there. Hey, can I, is anyone interested in a folk metal festival? And I actually got responses from South America, Australia. Wow. Uh, I was shocked. I, I could not believe that I don't, I'm like Craigslist. I was like, how are, how are people in Australia <laughs> finding this thing on Craigslist and in, in Pennsylvania, you know? Um, but um, anyway, so like going back to the last one, it was, it was just tough, you know, and again, I, I just thought if you looked at those bands on paper and you're like, God, who wouldn't pay X amount of dollars to see all these bands. And especially for people that have, that went to the previous festivals, I, I think they, they know that, you know, I strive to, to, to give, you know, people a show that's, you know, uh, worth their dollar and to see 16 bands for like 40 bucks. I mean, I just, to me, it was like kind of a no brainer, but financially it just didn't pan out like, uh, like I thought it would. So, but you know, never, never say never. We'll see what happens. We'll have to see how it happens, <laughs> you know, going down the road, uh, yep. this year, I don't see it happening, but next year, you know, it's always a possibility, you know, you know, that, that does bring up something that I, that I've always kind of found interesting, especially about like folk metal. So it, it feels <laughs> like. The international bands, so you, you've got like Tear, and I know I'm mispronouncing that, but you know, Corpaclani and uh, Enciferum and all these major international acts. It's like when they come to town, they right. sell out venues. Right. But, but like more localized folk metal gets very, like comparatively little attention. And right. it is interesting. It, it, it's like you only, you know, you go, you know, El, El Vete gets, uh, Sponsored by Honda, <laughs> but, but as far as like local folk metal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you know. you're so spot on with that. It's because um, I I uh, did an interview with um, there's a uh, a couple guys that were at the show that 
we were talking about it. And I said, it, you know, if, I said, if you want bands from Europe or wherever come over, you got to support your local scene first, which I didn't realize that um, I, when I was originally starting the festival, I, I was trying to get into a large venue and they were asking me questions like, well, you know, what, what could you expect to draw? And I said, I, I really don't know. I can only take a guess based on what I feel. And they said, well, give us an example of a show that's been around recently. And I gave them one of the Pagan Fest shows or something along those lines. And they were able to look up each show at each venue, what the ticket counts were, how much it grossed, how much it netted. I didn't know that existed. I don't know what he was looking at, but he was like, oh, yeah, that show did 500 some tickets. And I'm thinking, well, I'm like, wow, that, you know, Corpa Kalani show or something like did 500 tickets. And he, he says that he says, that's probably not a show we would want to do here. That's not a, a big enough show. And I'm like, I'm talking about a show I'm hoping to get a hundred people at, you know? Right. And, <laughs> um, so it kind of blew my mind that, you know, I might've been kind of starry eyed when I was, when I was doing this, but I also knew like, you know, if I could get a smaller venue with a, a good lineup, not get killed on, you know, um, you know, some of the costs and stuff like that. I mean, I think, I think it could succeed. And I, I understand like, you know, the first one was a trial run. Second one was a little bit better. And then the third one, I was like, okay, now I could really, you know, make it a two day thing. And then when that, you know, I mean, when I, there was people like sneaking into the show, not paying. And, um, you know, people I knew too, like people that like, I mean, I saw one guy walk in, I'm like, dude, you didn't pay. And it just, it's kind of frustrating. Um, but going back to your point, yeah, the, the local scene for uh, folk metal, and I understand it's kind of tough. I mean, we're, we're you know, a few hours apart. I mean, for me to get to a show down where you guys are or for you guys to come up here, I mean, it's it's not easy. And I just think of some of the bands, I mean, like Ether Realm coming up from North Carolina for, for one show. I mean, you know, that's been part of the problem, too, is like, you know, trying to catch a band, um you know, maybe while they're in the middle of a tour that they could do the one show for me or whatever, like uh Hellsot was a great example. I mean, I, you know, talked to Eric uh, from Hellsot numerous times about doing the show, but it's like trying to get him, you know, to get them at the time when they're going to be touring and all that. I think they ended up playing at uh, Maryland folk metal fest. Um, right. That, that, that time when we were, I was trying to coordinate things with him. So there's bands that are willing to make the trip. Um, but again, it's got to be financially worth the while. So then it's that balance of, you know, right. what bands are going to play, how much, you know, because I want to make a, you know, I don't want a band to have to drive, you know, a thousand miles and they're going to make 50 bucks. You know, it's not fair. And um, so, um, yeah, it's it's not easy. And again, the local scene, um, like I think in your in your town, it's. I think you got a strong scene, but you know, you go to Philly and maybe it's not as much, or you go to like, let's say upstate New York, you got a lot of bands up there or you go to Massachusetts, there's bands there, but you know, if you're on the Midwest, there's probably nothing or, you know, there's just so many variables. And again, you don't know what kind of blend of bands is going to work. It's, it's, it's all a, it's all a, you know, you kind of just throw it out there and see if it, if it sticks. Yeah, I would actually even so. So interestingly, I wouldn't even. So our local scene, at least in in respect to, or at least with respect to folk metal, it's actually interesting. I believe it's so. Second Guard is, I I think the of the folk metal acts in Maryland is the most popular. Right, and we're probably like at least that I'm aware of the second. Uh, and and then um oh my god, what is. <laughs> I can't, can't think of the name of the third one. Oh, we got to clip this out. Uh, oh, this no. The promo, and then they'll be all <laughs> upset. The, 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 uh, <laughs> the dogs and day drinkers, guys. What okay. was their, their, their focus? I thought they. Oh, we, we should clip this part out. I thought they disbanded. Oh, no. <laughs> let, me, let me see. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, from, they're from the other side of the, the bay. So, you know, just coming to Baltimore is ours. Right. <laughs> But but it's um, like, well, um, not uh, Tessile. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 That's yeah those guys. Yeah. Yes. 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 But but like, really, it's like us. I guess us two now. If if they're disbanded, um, it, it's almost as if we're like a gravitational pull unto ourselves. Right. Like, 
there's dedicated fans of both bands and, and they pretty, they like very reliably turn out to shows, right? but they don't necessarily, it, it's not just like, you know, you play a show in Baltimore and then like everybody shows up. It's like, Oh, it's the Eisenhower fans. And it's the second guard. Fan. I think the second guard might have a little bit more broad, a, a, a bit more broad appeal than we do. More broad. Um, but I'm not totally certain. But yeah, it, it's 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 interesting, you know. Even here, where we do kind of relatively successful, like it's, especially compared to our popularity level, it's still pretty niche. Yeah, yeah. It's not easy. I mean, um, and I think that that that's you know kind of is the heart of the issue. Is you know, is a folk metal festival a big enough draw just on its own? Because that's when I started thinking, you know. Do I need to make it like a black metal and folk metal festival, or do I need to make it a doom metal and folk metal festival? I mean, you know, I don't. That's what I, I, I've kind of, you know, and that's why I, like some of the bands that I've kind of mingled in kind of are outside the peripheral edges of what may be folk metal, um, right. you know, just so I could, you know, maybe draw in a couple of those other, you know, other fans, you know. Um, just so that there's more bodies there, you know, they might not go to see, you know, bands A, B and C, but they like bands D, E and F. And I think that's the kind of idea of, you know, any big festival, you know, look at all those festivals in Europe. I mean, a festival like Vakken could have, you know, Amon Amarth, they could have Behemoth, they could have, you know, Accept, they could have Satyricon, they could, you know, you could have multiple genres of festival and everyone's there to see everyone. Um, you know, it's again, it's one of those things that that whatever that um, mix of, you know, band assortment and styles and stuff like that, that that works for drawing people in. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if I've discovered it yet or not. I mean, I think I on some level I have, but not enough to make it like a hugely successful thing at this point. So Tayshale is still around, by hmm. the way. Yeah, I um, not doing anything because of COVID. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I think. Um, well, I'm friends with uh, John on Facebook, and I, I think he lives in in Pennsylvania now, if I'm not mistaken, or he's like outside of Philly or something like that. And I, I think he's doing some other projects. I don't know if I'm friends with anyone anyone else in the band uh, off the top of my head. I'm, I'm probably am, but uh, yeah, no, their their EP was very promising. So I'm hoping that. Uh, yeah, you know, they're able to put uh, something else together soon. So, um, but yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, luckily the American folk metal scene has gotten uh, stronger over the last couple of years, um, and uh, you know, we'll just have to kind of see how things go. I mean, again, with a couple of bands getting signed, um, hopefully it opens the door for for more bands wanting to do it, and you know, potentially bigger and um, you know, more successful touring for for bands uh here and you know again getting the europeans back over here too is gonna be a big help so I was, yeah, um... definitely. <laughs> the uh uh if you don't mind i want to go yeah. back to the money real quick the yeah uh, the i i don't know if people realize how many expenses there uh-huh. are just like so you want to put on a festival it's more than email the bands right and then say exactly. come here you, you need you need a venue i assume uh the the place the last uh fest was at didn't have lights so you had to hire lights and right. sound yeah and food yeah. <laughs> and uh promotion you know yeah. which is more than just posting on facebook yeah you know? well it's um you know i i would start with you know, I had like a, I wouldn't even call it a spreadsheet. I just had like a word doc that just had things I need to, you know, throw money at or something like that. <laughs> it was just a laundry list of things, you know? And, you know, so then, um, I would send out a questionnaire to potential bands. I would say, you know, any band that's interested in playing, you know, send me a link or an email or whatever, and I'll send you the questionnaire. So, I mean, that was, again, the, the priority one was knowing, you know, 
A, which bands could make it? You know, uh, are they going to be touring at the time? So let's say this is like January, February, and let's say the festival takes place in the fall. A lot of the, a lot of the bands have no clue, you know, what they're doing the next month, much much less, you know, six or eight months away. So, um, you know, then I'd be asking, like, you know, how many people do you have? You know, are you going to need a hotel room? So then, you know, then you got to plan that into it. So let's say a band would say, you know, for us to play X amount of time, we'd we'd like to get paid a hundred bucks, which I don't think is unreasonable at all. You know, if I'm thinking like a band's going to drive from, you know, Ohio or something like that, for them to come and play for an hour and they're only asking to be paid a hundred bucks, I'm like, you know, they're losing money on that deal. Yep. So, um, so then, um, so just think about you got to have X amount of bands. Each has a different ask. You know, some bands are going to say, hey, we'll make up the money in the merch. We don't really, you know, or they'll say, hey, we, we just want to play. We don't need to get paid. We don't care. And then there's other bands that say, hey, we need, a, you know, a huge amount of money to do this. So um, so then when you start, you know, OK, just like from a promotional point of view, and I think a promotion, yeah, Facebook is great. Everyone's on it and all that. But I mean, if people haven't ever done it before, you know, I mean, they make you pay to place ads. Uh, or they call it post uh, boosting. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like a vague term. You know, it says you'll reach more people if you do that. Well, I, my experience was I would pay money for all these uh, uh, boosting of posts, and it really didn't do anything. I would say, if anything, less people might have seen it. Um, but whatever. Um, so then, you know, I want to try to get as much local. Um, promotion done as i could so i had i printed flyers i designed and printed a flyer and i had friends that would go we'd go around to the music stores um record stores tattoo parlors any place within 50 miles of the show and on, on everyone's own dime they would go and, and post the flyers and whatnot um you know luckily i mean i i struck gold with a venue because they were more than willing to give me the space for nothing uh, because it is a, uh, a hotel that had a huge ballroom. And um, they said, you know, Hey, you know, we don't have anything booked, you know, you can use the space and they know they're going to make revenue with, um, you know, uh, the bar bill, the food, the hotel rooms, things like that. So, I mean, I, I was very, very fortunate when it came to that, but then, you know, I still had to get, you know, sound crew, um, and that was uh, for the last one. Tony from one of the bands, he owned um, a music store and did sound and lighting. So we kind of made a deal where, you know, gave you know his band a spot. And then he gave me a, a huge discount on um, the lights and the sound. And he had people that came and did it. So, I mean, they didn't, I was like blown away by how many people he brought with him to you know, have, have, I mean, it was like he had a, an army of people there. I was like, he, he really went above and beyond. And then, you know, things like merch, you know, like um, uh, people always want to go to a show and maybe buy a shirt and stuff like that. So then, you know, I got to worry about the shirts and stuff. And there's so many I like, for, uh, I forgot about that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wristbands, you know, like little, little things like that, like, you know, uh, entrance wristbands. Um, you know, uh, like you said, food and things like that. Those were kind of like not not really a big deal. But I once I knew um, what the bands were um, uh, asking for, like you know, and you know, bands that were asking for like ridiculous amounts of money, I would just say, yeah, there's just no way it's going to happen. But um, the ones that were, were reasonable, I thought it was like kind of the right blend of of styles and, and, and so on and so forth. I looked at what the, the number was going to be. And then I'm like, okay, well now I can figure out what a ticket price would be. Cause then I kind of already knew what the sound and stuff was going to be. So, you know, I always figured my break even was going to be sell. If I could sell a hundred tickets, I would be good. And I, I didn't, I mean, again, based on the lineup, I didn't think that was going to be unreasonable. And we fell short of that. And so, I mean, as soon as, probably like when one o'clock on Saturday was rolling around and we were like into our second or third band at that point. And I'm like, I can't believe, you know, we were like, even the like people that helped volunteer were there. We're like, how come there, this place is packed with people already. We were like kind of shocked. And then, you know, then it's things like 
you, you know, how many people are going to drive to, you know, the Poconos? I mean, um, you know, we're, it's an hour and a half from Philly. So then it's, you know, three hours for you guys. Um, you know, you're an hour plus from New York. You, know, you got people that are coming from like upstate New York and New England and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, so I lost, you know, a decent amount of money just right off the bat with that. And then, um, you know, just like things you don't even really think about, you just end up, you know, I look at the credit card statement the next month. I'm like, holy shit. I, I, <laughs> I, I was like, and I that, and that, that. really, that really kind of was demoralizing because, you know, I look at the list. I'm, I'm actually looking at, you know, the posters and stuff right now. And I'm like, how, how would you not want to come to the show? It's like, you know, it's really frustrating. And again, it's like, um, one of the people that helped organize all the vendors that were there, I mean, the vendors, didn't do that great either. Some of them did really well, like the tattoo artists did really well. And, um, some of the other ones, but then other ones, like they just didn't make any money. And it's like, um, you know, it's like, I, I don't know what the expectations are. I mean, you know, I try to encourage people. You gotta, you know, help these, these vendors pay a fee to be here. You know, that kind of help offset some of the costs too. But, um, you know, some of them did well, some of them didn't. So it's frustrating. Cause it's like, yeah, I've done everything I can to, to, to really get the word out there. And, um, you just, you just don't know. I mean, it's, you know, for people that do this for a living that are promoters, uh, <laughs> I, I hats off to them because the, the amount of stress that's involved, uh, is incredible. Um, but you know, again, I, I, I'm glad I've done it and I could potentially do it again, but it's just a matter of, I gotta, I gotta make sure I do things a little, you know, a little smarter and a little more fiscally, you know, viable so that, um, you know, I don't lose my shirt on it. So, um, well, why don't you just get them on a Mars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's a simple thing, you know, like, um, that boat will fit in that, uh, that ballroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we can't bring our Viking ship in here. Um, <laughs> that's the thing is like, you know, um, you know, I, I have a lot of friends in Europe. I mean, they want to come over here, but then, you know, I, I tell them about the festival and then they get, they really want to get gun shy. So that's, you know, when you see like a, a pagan fest or, you know, um, or you'll see like, um, some bands that are coming around now that they're not really folk metal festivals. They're kind of a little bit of everything, you know, they're, they're, you know, uh, tears is a good example that they, they tour with like a very diverse group of bands anymore it's not just like folk metal like they were like the first couple of times i've seen them so uh and amount of marth is a great example too is like you know they they kind of have some of that crossover appeal too um and then when you start getting into the finished bands and things like that then it gets to be a little <laughs> you know that's even you know like events of fear could cross over a little bit but you know corpa Klani really can't you know they're kind of you know probably maybe more folky than than let's say an insufferum and then you know then then what like you know what what kind of package of bands do you put together that that would work for so it's again it, the european bands at least you know i'm not say, say, saying for all of them but let's say not even the, the 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 bigger bands but let's say like uh you know some smaller bands let's say from the netherlands or sweden or, or poland or whatever that want to come over they're they're probably never going to get that opportunity unless um, it, it's more popular. Period, stateside for them to try to make that chance. And and touring in the United States is not easy. I mean, right? Um, it's, there's just uh, for, for those European bands, there's a huge price tag up front right. because you got to oh, get them perfect. all plane tickets. You have to get them transportation. They don't already own it. Yeah. You probably have to get them equipment. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, the visas, visas are no joke either. Visas, oh, and visas, yes. That's the that's the big thing. I mean, I want to say it's in the thousands of dollars per person now to get yeah. a visa to come over here, and so then you know they're they're in that same you know position. They're going to take time off from their schedules. Let's say they all have like a quote unquote regular job, or they do other things financially. You know, and then they're going to take six weeks off or whatever to tour the United States. And, you know, they better hope that the shows sell out and they sell tons of merch and, you know, all those other things. Or they're going to go back broke. And I've, you know, I've heard that, too, where, you know, bands come over here and then the shows are 
you know, not what they were expecting. And, you know, they end up losing a fortune and then they can't ever do it again or won't do it again. So, um, it's, you know, it's got killed. Be, yeah. It's I mean, killed it's, big bands like that band Green Carnation. Right. They just, they just reformed. But part of the reason they broke up in 2007 is because of the U.S. tour. And right. I was at one of those shows. It was like 40 people. And Green Carnation is not a small band. Right. Yeah, and I actually, um, I saw the band Pain of Salvation a few years ago, and they played at the, the House of Rock in Maryland after playing, I think, The Empire previously, like the previous day. And like, I think what they seem not to realize, this is a bit of a tangent, but I'm, I'm guessing what they didn't realize is like, okay, you know, House of Rock to Empire, so it's Northern Virginia to like Central Maryland. Mm-hmm. That's not that far for, for the U.S. So there's yeah. like no point in playing those two locations. If you're in central Maryland, you're you're fine to go to Northern Virginia, right, for, right. for a show. Um, so so that yeah, there was like That's, seventy people at that at that show for Pain of Salvation, and they're a huge band too. So and well, Empire uh, Empire closed, and this says House of Rock is also closed. So both those House venues are gone. Oh my! Wow. I'm just dating myself. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you. I I can I can really go back in the time machine because I mean uh, I turned fifty two this year, so I was going to shows. Over 35 years ago. And I grew up where the festival was in Stroudsburg. There was never, ever, ever a chance a band was ever going to come to Stroudsburg. So the next closest place to go see a show would, would be, let's say, somewhere like Scranton or Wilkesbury, which I never heard about shows, but Allentown used to be a mecca for shows. Yeah, I remember in the 90s begging my dad to drive me to Allentown to see Metallica. Yeah, because they were playing there, and uh, we did not go. <laughs> oh my! It was. I'll, I'll tell you what. Growing up in the mid '80s, um, and being a metalhead, and and being able to get to Allentown was unbelievable. I'm going to conservatively say I went to 200 shows. I mean, oh, wow. it, every right. band you can think of. Because I I grew up on thrash. I mean, I was you know Metallica, um, Slayer, all of those, and well, I would say. I, Every I week. have to interrupt. I don't yeah. want to throw my dad under yeah. the bus. I've seen Metallica with him three times. Oh, we'll see. There. see it all worked so, out. So it worked out. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're playing at they're playing at a huge stadium near you soon. Um, <laughs> but like, um, you know, I saw Metallica open for Ozzy in '86 in Allentown. That's like That's the a, tour you want to. I mean that. Yeah. See, I mean that was, Yeah. That, I mean because look, I, I'm a. We're all we're all bass players here, so let's you know just to see <laughs> just to see Cliff was worth it. So it was like um, that sound you heard weekend. was everyone stopping the podcast because they realized they're talking to three basses. <laughs> oh my god! What what, what, what what conspiracy is this? Um, but the um, uh, I, I was like, my wife and I were talking about this the other day that. Um, Right around, let's see, it would have been like 89 or so, um, right when Faith No More was getting, right when the real thing was coming out, I saw them on the, op- they were they were going to start their own headlining tour, and the night before, they were in New York, and they played with Voivod and Soundgarden, and I'm like, oh my god, I wish I could have gone to that show in the worst way, so... But the opening night, they were playing in Reading, and there was like no one at the show, and fast forward a few months later when um, Epic, that video was on MTV every hour. There was 1,500 people trying to get into the show in Allentown, a venue that maybe held 300 people. And I'd gotten my tickets like the night before because Flotsam and, and Jetsam and Death Angel had played the night before. And they said, hey, oh. you come to the show tomorrow night? I'm like, yeah. Oh, here, you can buy your ticket now. So we had our tickets already. That's I mean, that's how crazy, you know, uh, music can be is you know a band that you've never heard of for the most part and then a few months later i mean because i mean mtv back in the day was amazing as far as like finding out about new bands and you know headbangers ball and all that sort of stuff but um yeah i'm I'm not really convinced that uh infrastructure exists anymore no nah, and you know like um um, if, you know, may, but maybe I, I am seeing more Ether Realm shirts. So yeah. if that's how you want to make oh. it, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, like well, they, Frog Power. Aren't they? Yeah, well, they they've got um, well, they're, they're, it's Holy yes. Mountain Printing is doing all their shirts now. So I mean, that's a great 
no, no, no plug here or anything like that. But they, that's a great place for shirts. I mean, they got a lot of diversified bands and uh, uh, genres, and they're reasonably priced and all that. But you know, it's but they've got you know they're on a label now, and uh, they've got uh, you know they had a couple of videos come out after you know for the the latest album and things like that. So it's you know. Um, you know, on some level, like a lot of bands kind of view it more as a hobby as opposed to like a business now. So some of those things that, you know, bands in the past would do because they were hungry and this was the way that they were making a living. Some bands now are just like, eh, you know, yeah, we'll go in the studio, we'll record it, we'll put it out there, we'll put it out on Bandcamp, you know, we'll make a few bucks. And so it's a, it's a totally different animal than it was back in the day. I mean, um, um you know, I, I worked in record stores when I was in high school or out of high school and stuff like that. And it, again, it's that's a, a an animal that doesn't exist anymore. The record store, or you know, not on the level it was. So it's, um, you know, I mean, I think it's just it's just a constantly evolving and changing thing. And I just hope over time that, especially given how things are now, circumstantially, is that I hope it swings back that you know live bands and and touring and, and stuff becomes, becomes a big thing again. You know, hopefully people will, will come out in droves because they haven't had it for like the last year and a half. That's what I'm hoping, you know, I imagine that's right. what fade to black's counting on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's another thing that I, 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 we've never really talked about this, but you know, I do, I mean, not recently, but I, I'm in a metallic tribute too. So it's like, that is like, you know, the go-to thing is, you know, the, the Metallica tribute is, is always, you know, it's always fun to do. Uh, I mean, you guys do it awesomely. So it's like, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, like my, uh, the guy, I, the guys I do it with, we're, we're kind of like not doing anything right now, but the, the singer is like an, another Metallica tribute project. <laughs> so it's like, you know, there's always one around. Um, but yeah, that, that was, that's always a lot of fun to do that kind of stuff too. Cause that's really, you know, again, the stuff I kind of grew up on and, um, you know, I always love to go back to it. Um, you know, cause it's, I mean, I would love to do a maiden tribute, but I don't know if I have the chops to really pull that off anymore, but, um, yeah, it, it's fun to do, but I, you know, j- me supporting bands, I think is much more fruitful for me and much more enjoyable than to try to do it on my own. I would rather, you know, take my hard earned money and buy shirts and, and support bands and, and all that sort of stuff than, than trying to do it on my own. I just, you know, I'm at a different point in my life where, you know, I don't think I could really do it as, as well as I could back in the day. So, so uh, this, this is not foreshadowing, but I totally understand that <laughs> you'll, you lose yeah. less money by liking, ba- it's like a, it's like a, uh, you, you watch those restaurants, or bar re- uh, bar rescue yeah yeah, yeah. in particular it, yeah. people are like i love going to bars so much i just bought it you yeah. know and then they lose money it's cheaper if you just drink your face off <laughs> every just, night just instead of owning it <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's I, again it's much more rewarding when i see like you know friends of mine you know uh succeed i would you know um and i it's, it's great helping you know be a small part of it i'm you know um and then, and I, I like you know when when they appreciate it that that you know they're getting help you know f- fulfilling their dreams. I mean that's to me is you know um, like I remember like you know just talking about Ether Realm again is like I remember hounding Jake so bad for a <laughs> shirt like five six years ago, and he was like he was like so apologetic because it was like he kept on forgetting to put it in the mail. <laughs> and I finally got this shirt, and I was like, I was so happy I got this shirt, and he was so happy I got the shirt. And then when I when I when they played the festival, and he was like, he was just throwing stuff at me here, take this. Take. It was like <laughs> it, was so, it was so fulfilling, you know. Um, yeah, but it's I just don't know, you know. I know there's a lot of people that are like that that are really you know they support bands and stuff like that, but um, it just you know that's that's the only way that you know, you're going to get to hear the music is by supporting the bands on some level, you know, financially. I mean, you know, you guys with the Kickstarter and with Dustmore with the Kickstarter and stuff like that, it's like, I don't know why people don't jump at the opportunities because it's like, you want to hear the album, you're you're a fan of the band. If you could throw a few dollars at it, it's like, that's how you're going to make sure that you hear it. You know, so, you can't record it for free. Right. <laughs> at right. least, at least both of those campaigns, uh, 
far exceeded their goals. Oh, so. I was I was blown away. I was bl- I mean, when when I saw yours. Like I remember, like <clears throat> I was waiting for the countdown. I first thing in the morning went on it. I was at work or something like that, and I went out for lunch and I looked at it and they said it's already met or something. It was like six hours or eight. It was like <laughs> yeah. crazy. It was like oh my, I could not believe it. And then with the Dustborn guys, I knew their previous one was really successful too. So I I knew that you know theirs was going to do well immediately. But um, you know, there's like friends of mine over in um, Czech Republic that just ran a, a. I mean, it was a huge amount. They were asking for a lot of money. Um, and I know they had to extend it because they weren't even going to get close. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, sometimes it it, it works and sometimes uh, it doesn't. You know, I mean, I'm I'm just glad it worked out for you guys and and for other bands that it works out for. It's it's I think it's a great idea, um, and for the bands that really put it to use um, and offer decent perks. <laughs> you know, the, those are like the, that's like the winning formula is you know. If, you're, if it's for the right thing and you're going to offer uh, some decent perks and stuff like that, I think it's 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 a win-win for everyone. We're going to continue the interview with Jeff Addison next week on Podcast Them Down. Thanks for listening to Podcast Them Down. You can find Burning Shadows, Eisenmore, and Recently Vacated Graves on Bandcamp, as well as Facebook, along with Fade to Black, Metallica Tribute, and Podcast Them Down itself. Until next time, keep it metal.